And welcome to the final episode of the Hexagonal Box. I've taken all the tape off, and as you can see, after a bit of a debacle last week, we've now got quite a nice box. So what we've got to do this episode is smooth all this off, plane these edges on the side of the box, finish off the top, cut the top off, put some inside lining on the box, and I'm going to introduce you, if you haven't done it before, to flocking. So, let's go. Over to the vise. Normally I put water in the vise, but in this particular case, because I've got inlay and I've used hide glue, I'm not going to do that. And where I've torn out here, that's fine at this stage, because I'm going to cut that back later. So I'm taking it down to oh, within about a 64th of the sides. That's starting to look pretty good. Again, cork block, plywood face, 100 grit. And now I'll just give it a bit of a sand. Okay, that's starting to look pretty acceptable now. I've still got little glue marks. What I'm going to do with that is use a cabinet scraper. And that's pretty much okay. What you're aiming for <coughs> is just to lightly sand the surface. You don't want to go too far because you'll actually have a join in the top of your box, but you'll have the corner a little bit off center. So it's just a question of be mindful what you're doing Keep checking and don't spend too much time on one side. Where it's high, I'll just knock that off with a plane. Just don't forget I've got veneer here, so I can't really hook in as hard as I'd like to. Again, a bit of 100 cork block. And gently, remember not to go through here, just focus on the edges. Now I won't go all the way through the grades. So I'll go 180 and then 240, leave it there. Because this veneer I'm working on here, it's actually 0.3 of a mil thick. So I haven't got much to play with. Two forty, and that should do us. And go in this case, go with the grain of the veneer, so we don't have any cross grain scratches. Now we can start working on the face. So what I'm going to do is very lightly sand it, and then I'm going to put a filler on it and let that dry, and then bring it back. You'll notice what I'm sanding. I'm actually going around i'm not just going one way the reason for that is of course we've got six segments here plus we've got various grain directions of the leaf in the inlay so by sanding in all different directions lightly better you take four times as long and get it right than get it done in a hurry and mess it up okay so i'm reasonably happy with all the sanding on that now what i've got to do is fix this up and what i'm going to do is go over to the router and use a core box bit. I don't know if you can see that there. The core box bit actually has a rounded piece on it. I'm using a smaller one than I've got here, but it's already in the router so I can't show you it, but it's about a 10 mil. And I'm gonna gradually creep up on this mark here. Now because we've cut such a large section out of here, when you put it down, it does look a little bit out of balance. So what to do, We'll make a base, which I was going to make anyway, and we'll accentuate this waist or curve, if you like, that we've got here. But at the moment, I'm going to take the top off. All right. One box, nicely 
cut off, take this masking tape away, and you'll find that it hasn't got any nasty bits of chip out. Now I also said I was going to flock on the inside of this box. I'm going to have a solid timber insert that will then hold the lid on, but I want to flock the bottom and I want to flock the inside of the lid. Not the sides, just the inside. So in order to do that, this is flock by the way. It's a rayon dust if you like and very very fine but to put it on you have to get a color that's a little bit dark if you can't match the color of the flock exactly get one that's just a fraction darker than the flock you're using and then when you put the flock on you won't notice the darkness underneath but if you use a slightly lighter uh, paint than the flock it will definitely show through so what i'm going to do here just get these dags off is I'm going to put a coat of paint on the base and just under the top. Okay, so as you can see, I've now got masking tape all the way around the inside. I've just got one of those throwaway sponge brushes, which aren't all that brilliant, but it's getting the job done. Try not to get any lumps in it. You can help it. Not so important on this first coat, but it's definitely important on the second coat. And there we go. While that's drying, I went away and I've machined up this Spanish cedar. Now it's machined down to about five mil. It really doesn't matter the thickness, but if you go too thin, when you cut the angles on it, you'll find that it'll start to break away. Five mil works for me. The other reason I like five mil is what I've got here is a bullnose bit. With this five mil board, it fits nicely into this bullnose bit, like that. And if you don't have one of these bullnose bits, it really doesn't matter. You can use a plane, a block plane, to put a leading edge on, or you can wait until you get it all in the box and then just sand a leading edge with a piece of sandpaper. And the reason you want a bit of a leading edge is so the box top can be guided on and fit nicely on top. So what I'll do, go over to the router and I'll just run this piece of timber with this bullnose bit to get the round over and then I'm going to set my saw up at 30 degrees so I can cut all the pieces I need to go around here. And there I have six pieces all cut. Now to put it together simply place them inside the box and there you have the inserts obviously they're too big if I put this on they're way too big so I've got to cut these down to the right length actually before we do that what I'll do is flatten these tops off should have done this before. If you can see that, you can still see the rough saw marks on it. So we'll just clean that up. I think I'll have a five mil lip coming over the top of this box. So to measure from the bottom to this edge is 47 mil. So if I go 52 mil for these, that'll be just the right height. And there they are, cut to length. Push down nice and hard, get the lid, pop it on. And there we have a box. What we've got to do now is flock the inside, flock the inside there, which I'll do. And then I'll show you how I make the basic stand, which is the stand I would have made on this box had I not had the mishap. And at the end, I'll show you what this box should have looked like on the stand, and then the stand I've made with this box, and then you be the judge of which one you think looks nicer. So here's another box that's 
the same as the one we're doing here without the um, mishap in it. And I've got Jara coming down the side, whereas the other one it was Queensland Walnut. Now I've machined up a length of Jara, which I can get the six sides for the stand out of. And it's 25 mil by 10 mil, or one inch by three eight. What I'm gonna do now is with this router bit, which is a round over bit, I'm gonna go over to the router and actually put a roll over down one length of this side. And then I'll cut it into segments that will give me about 10 mil protrusion on the bottom of the box. And to correspond to the base, I'll also run this bit over the top to give me a round over on the top. Now I've got the round over on the base and I'll also put a round over on the top itself. Place the box on the material you're going to cut the stand out of and then just mark in where you want that to come out. So if I cut six this length here, it's gonna be enough to make a nice base for the box. Now I've got the six pieces to make up the hexagonal base. What I'll do is glue them together. There's a lot of ways of gluing them together. My favorite way is to use a rubber band. This is, um, I think it's a 109 that I've actually cut down. Grab my glue pot. I'll just glue these edges up. The best way I've found to glue them up after you've got the glue on is to just lay them upside down so the rounded part is facing downwards and have the glue, the rubber band, sorry, level with the straight edge of the stand. And release one end of the rubber band. And let them sort of come together. And there you have it. Rub them in nice and close. Get good contact. What I'm going to do is just very gently place it there on a mat. The paper over the top. nice heavy weight to hold them flat until they dry. All right now with the flocking as you can see I've put masking tape around the edge again because when I put the second layer of paint on I don't want it to go on the edge. On this you can see that we've already got the lining board in there which I'm going to take out so it doesn't matter if any paint gets on the inside wall as it has there. We've got a few little bits in here. Keep as close as you can to keeping it on the bottom, but if a bit goes on the wall, it doesn't matter. But the top, it's important not to get any. Got a bit of 180, and I'm just gonna scuff up the finish that I've got. And it's just to basically rough it up so the second coat will key to it nicely. I like keeping it low key, so I'll show you how I did flocking. Up to the laundry, borrow the wife's laundry basket, put some paper in it. When she wasn't looking, I snuck into the kitchen and knocked over the sieve. Just an ordinary flour sieve. The same paint as I used before and a new brush. Here we go. Make sure you coat every part that you want flocked. Because if you leave a little bit out, it's not gonna look good. Um, you don't want any lumps or bumps on the finish. You want it as smooth as possible. Now here's the magic. Flock, box in the basket, 
sieve over the top, tip in the flock, give it a good shake. And then pick the box up and just tap either side like I'm doing here. Knock out the excess. And there you have a beautifully flocked lined box. We'll do the same to the top. Same process. Got the masking tape in place. I don't know if you can notice, but I've got some skin from the paint. Just make sure you get that <coughs> out so the painted surface is as flat as possible. Basket. Still got flock in the sieve and then just shake it all over where you've just painted. Give it a nudge either side so you get total coverage. Get the excess flock out. Now if per chance you see something that's landed in here it might be a mosquito, it might be a bit of cloth, it might be a bit of dust. Resist the temptation to remove it because you'll ruin the finish. So what I'm going to do now is actually put these two aside and let them dry for 24 hours before I even touch the flock. That's how easy it is to flock, which is really easy and it's a beautiful finish. But again, I stress, don't touch it until it's dry and it's not dirty no flock left in it no one will know that I pinched it out of the kitchen and then with this newspaper let's get your flock container and put the spare stuff all back in there might as well finish this stand off That's nicely set. Rub a band off. Then just if there's any glue over the edges, what have you, just, I'm just using 320 here, just giving it a light sand to clean it up. I'm not worried about the underside at the moment, just this top side. Now you can, if you can, if you like, if it's, if it's um, sharp on the edges, just knock the sharpness off on the inside of the underneath. It's just a little refinement that people pick up. It shows that you've got an eye for detail and you've actually made the effort to take the edges off. I like what James Krenoff used to say, who's a great furniture maker, who sadly is no longer with us, but he used to say, I like making sure that it's well finished in areas people won't see. And I think that's a, a great idea. Because a lot of times you look at the back of a cabinet or the underside of a cabinet top and you expect it to be rough. But when you see that someone's actually taken the time to cabinet scrape it or polish it, it um, just makes it more of a craftsman in my eye. Okay, so that's all nice and clean. No sharp edges there. It's nice and flat, rounded over. Use a bit of PVA on this. Could use hide glue, but where it's not gonna show creep, it really doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. But I make sure with that glue line that it's nowhere near the edge so it's not going to squeeze out. And what I want is all these edges here to line up with the joins in the stand. So I'll just leave that, put a weight on the top of that and come back when the glue's set and the flock should be set 
then we finished. All right, this has had time to dry. Now we have quite a nice box with the base already on it. That's just about finished, ready to get a finish on it. Now with the flocking, this is dried and you can see the um, tape on the inside has got flock on it. But once it's dried, when you take that tape off, that's what I'm doing there, look at that beautiful defined line you have with the flocking and now that's dry so it won't come off it'll stay there forever I'll just go over to the router and router some of these edges and I'll show you what a difference it makes all right now as you can see I've routed some of these edges and that silver ash that we put in has now come out as quite a prominent feature there it is in its normal edge and there it is when it's been routed. I'll put it on a stand and then we can compare the two. Here is the original box that I wanted to make, obviously with the leaf inlay. And that's the stand we made. And I've just got a plain veneer inside. So that's what we set out to make. Then we had that um, altercation with the saw which changed everything. This is what I ended up with. And I think it's a pretty acceptable box. What I had to do was make changes to the base, but it's nicely flocked on the inside. It's got nice supports. This gives it a, I don't know, a bit of an oriental feel, I think. There are the two boxes that should have been the same, but ended up a little bit different. So, if you make a mistake and it gets frustrated, walk away, leave it for a day, come back, rethink it, and come up with a way you can still use what you've already done. Just put some D-Wax Blonde, just a quick coat on, so you can actually see the color that comes up on that veneer. And I think you'll agree it's spectacular. So that's it, Steve pulling the shed door down on another project, and I look forward to having your company in the shed next time we meet but until then remember to keep it sharp but more importantly keep it safe and enjoy your woodworking